And now, welcome to the Great Cigar and Pipe Show. Presented by Hiram and Solomon Cigars. And also, the Oliva Cigar Family. Coming to you live from the Corona Cigar Company Studios. I am a blues man. I live this life. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody, to another great cigar and pipe show. And uh, we do have an exciting guest tonight. Uh, the pipe world knows this gentleman four generations worth and uh eric stokeby is uh is uh, really one of the finest tobacconists that we have right now absolutely and what is kyle holding up right now kyle kyle is holding what up is a very important tin for this evening yeah. ah, this is, we, uh, this we is... will be smoking the fourth generation 1989 ron that's a good year you know why because you and i we put our rings on to our wives. That's right. That's right. We got married 1989, folks. So we've been married for a long time, believe it or not. So yeah. that, that women would stay with us. Kind of scary. It's amazing. It's, you know? It is. It is. It's amazing. Can you imagine that, Frank. Jesus I, Christ. I don't know. What? Boy, we're really scoundrels. <laughs> Texas, right? we, we, we blow a lot of smoke. <laughs> Texas Chorus says, hello, Sockers. <laughs> <laughs> What is going okay. on with that? <laughs> yeah, I like that. See, those, because he All sees right. a lot of Saka lookalikes. So somehow, there's, there's yes. Three of you on there, Saka smoke lookalikes. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. if we just black you out, then, you know, everything's looking good. No problem. You can pull a jar on us. Yeah, Go we we got to get you one of those the bowl <laughs> caps. caps for, like yeah, a, for, for yeah, I think so. A Halloween bowl Keep cap. scratching. Keep scratching. <laughs> I see that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you put your headphones a little bit on this, like this way, so people don't see any hair, they would think That's you're, right. you know, you're, uh... good looking like us. Yes. And we have, of course, none other than. Mr. Bruce Stark hey, saying Bruce. hello, Earthlings. Hey, Earthling. Hello, hello. Of and course, the we have Joey. The, you know, the chicken man is the on. Chicken the man chick. is on. <laughs> chicken Joe is in the house. Mr. Galino, how are you tonight? There you go. Mm. Oh, so Texas says, I look, hold on, it keeps moving. I look like a young Saka, Saka. bald and beard. Yeah. Well, yeah. All in a beard. Okay. Well, how, how how young yeah. is a young Saka? Yeah, I mean, you know, could, could he be twenty one? Could he be fourteen? What is a young Saka? How are you, Chris, Christopher Yowl? And I uh, think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Our faithful listener. Hello, and Christopher. And Brian Singer saying hello. hello Steve. Brian. Steve hmm. Roshan, and I believe I'm pronouncing yeah. that. Hello, Steve. Yeah. He's a new member of the Chicago Pipe Club. We just met nice. him two weeks ago, and. Uh, and um, you know what? He fell in love with the club, joined right away. And uh, nice. yes, yeah, Steve's going to be, I think, a very active member in our uh, Chicago Pipe Club. He's a yes. really nice guy. And uh, he's a newbie in a way, but uh, he, he learns fast. So, yeah. Oh, Texas, 43 years old. But he's bald, bald because of because marriage. Of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Join the club. <laughs> well, you see there, I'm 43, but no kids and no marriage. That's why I got my hair. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That, uh, that's the difference. Three bald guys with kids, it's, one single rat with nobody. <laughs> Miss All your single ladies. Hey. Mr. Christopher Eden is on. Chris, well, how are you, buddy? How's you life in Delaware these days? And Ooh. I know you'll be up, oh, well, down soon for Margoween, yeah. celebrating Margoween here at none Margarita. other Margoween mm. at Margaritaville Latitudes in Daytona Beach. Chris and his wife, Michelle. <laughs> have purchased their home. They'll be here visiting. Bring nice. a, couple of weeks, right? a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. A couple yeah. of weeks. I know. I know. That's I awesome. It. Yeah. Uh, that, that is awesome for them. I'm and so Ronnie, as as you forget to say, Ronnie forgot to say this. What? Who are we? Make sure. Well, that that too. Make sure <laughs> okay. you hit the share button, folks. There, I'm going to help Ronnie there. out with that. Share this with everyone you know, and even with people you don't know. Don't know. Yeah, just absolutely. send it to them. We've got everybody on your Facebook home. page. Just hit share, and they will all get in on it. You know, yeah, and they can if all get in on you it. have friends who don't follow Facebook. We're also right. on YouTube. We're on Rumble and Twitch, so they can see us live. Oh, and Twitch! Get... We're, we're twitching on Twitch. 
that's uh you know what somebody we were talking to michael and i have this game called uh uh the godfather it's a it's a board game mm -hmm. and michael suggested you, that we that we play a play. board game yeah. and have people watch and the game it takes about an hour to play he goes you'll have right. a lot of viewers watching us play the godfather can you imagine us as as, as the godfather hey, taking hits on this people is, this is perfect we should set that up i'll come over to you one of these you know weekend days yes. or something and then yes. we'll sit there we'll smoke around we'll drink some bourbons we'll play a godfather game hey what's that exactly. little bit something something might happen we you know we may have struck fire you could all get shot why not that's good yeah, <laughs> <fuck it. laughs> well, Harvey, you're not you're not here that's okay he could play. play he could play uh hey facetime his, i could face his bedroom <laughs> is where the horse head's going <laughs> <laughs> this is such a wonderful thing to talk about italian month everybody hello italians out there and all you wannabes <laughs> this month run there's so much going on why don't you introduce us first? I, I was going yep, that sounds great everybody welcome thank you very much for joining us and i'm ronnie pecorini down in florida he just got there he's by himself now and i mean by himself kyle gesso hey what's up everyone I'm having a great <laughs> night here a beautiful night out here in florida yeah there there you certainly go. is and then the amazing two one my brother retired bob how you doing folks welcome back and there's the one and only the chooch master himself cousin frank Hello, everybody. Oh, he went back to that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a pipe show night. And That's right. we're gonna it is. Really, yeah, you know, and we got to do more of these because, again, we've kind of neglected our pipe community. But uh, there's a lot going to be happening. We, we are going to have a lot more pipe and uh, stories and people coming on. And we've got sure. what, two more, at least two more for this year alone. Yeah, and 2024 is going to be big. We have uh, Shannon from uh, Missouri, 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 Missouri Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'll and be, then, that'll uh, be yeah. that's where uh, that's where Carol this from, one came from. Nice, yeah, nice. Nice. Some nice, nice yep. corn cob pipe. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, uh, Christine goes, oh, Don Frankie Corleone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. And then Bruce, of course, leave the gun, take the cigar. I, I like that. I was waiting, to, I was ready to read to Cannoli. But I maybe think maybe that could good. be our new outro. You know, we outro. might need. That yeah, could be our new what? outro. Remember, folks. I, I kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to leave the gun. That's <laughs> expensive. I want to take the gun and take the cigar. You know, hey, hey, no, take the hey, take fact, the gun, keep the gun, and hold up the person that's got the cigars, <laughs> take the cigars. <laughs> and then take the cigars too, yeah. and leave the person. No <laughs> worry. <laughs> leave the person with a cinder block tied to a sneaker. There you take go. the gun, take the cigar, take the cannoli, take it all. Of the all. Might as well take the wallet way. too. Yeah, take it all. <laughs> but no, absolutely, yeah. folks. Uh, we're. Uh, we're uh, going to be holding off a little bit, um, you know, because our special I don't know how much tonight... longer I can hold off. I really want to light this up because well, when I open look, this tin, the look, aroma look, coming out of this tin. Who's that little guy? Who Who is this little guy? Let me see. Think? It's it's oh, Eric Stokeby, the no bobblehead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bobblehead. Nice. nice. Very nice. Nice. So, awesome. Until Eric gets here. Yes, he's our stand in. He's the stand in. But I was going to do ventriloquist. <laughs> Hello, my little friends. <laughs> so, Eric's going to so, hang you know, out here. Fun. And this is a I, nice I, little thing because it actually it holds. It is cool. I like that. It, yeah, it holds, it's nice. a pipe holder, actually. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's very cool. That's cool. That's oh, cool. There, I think he's in, just he's there. in our green room. He is in yeah. our green room. He's oh, in right. gr oh, well, I Ooh, tell you what, before the then, while we work with him on that, why don't we uh, go to our sponsors, give him some time yep. to get all set up, because uh, yep. he's rushed to get on. He was talking maybe 8.30. He was going to try to get a little bit early, but he is in the green room, folks. So very good. Uh, folks, hit the share button, because tonight's going to be exciting and informative, and we have one of the best and one of the oldest families of tobacco in the world right now. So, Frank, take it away. Another day in paradise, you know, snacking cigars. <laughs>
Tower G Cigars is a dynamic new cigar brand grown from a love for cigar culture and a respect for the artisanship behind the craft. We are a minority owned family business based in Orlando, Florida. Our current collection delivers three exclusive lines, the Black Moses, Magic Stick, All Pro Series, featuring Leon Searcy's signature cigar and Ike Taylor's one of a kind, and the newly released Perfect Round, featuring 18 cigars, a front nine and a back nine. Visit our website at www.howardgcigars.com. You can find the full list of our retail partners there too. Thank you for making us part of your humidor. D.A.V. Cigars out of New York. Decades of experience combined with true love and deep understanding of cigars result in the highest of standard of each D.A.V. hand-rolled cigar. This is Phil Morgan, General Manager of Missouri Meerschaum Corncob Pipes in Washington, Missouri. Our mission since 1869 has been to produce great smoking pipes that anyone can afford. We guarantee our pipes won't be your most expensive, but they just might be the ones you smoke the most. At Missouri Meerschaum Company, we don't just sell our corncob pipes. We grow them, make them, and smoke them. Missouri Meerschaum, Washington, Missouri, since 1869. Loyalty. Passion. Courage. These are the founding principles of K by Karen Berger Cigars. The Maduro, the Habano, and the newly rated 93 by Cigar Journal Connecticut. Do yourself a favor and check out this wonderful line of cigars that come from a completely linear company from seed to your hands. Blue Smoke Atlanta is the vision of Robin Blue, founder and CEO and represents an award-winning luxury smoking accessory line based in Atlanta and sold worldwide. Since 2019, Blue Smoke Atlanta's goal was to redefine traditional smoking accessories into a timeless collection of exquisitely handcrafted luxury products to include cigar pokers, cannabis clips, jewelry, and other awesome things. For an elevated smoking experience, visit us at www.bluesmokeatl.com. At Mountain Smoke Premium Tobacco, we specialize solely in the finest hand-rolled, craft, and boutique cigars on the market. Mountain Smoke Premium Tobacco is sure to have something that will excite you. Shop our online humidor at www.mountainsmokewd.com. A family of four generations in tobacco. It started in Odense, Denmark, 141 years ago, 1882, with a factory and a retail store by Eric Peter Stokeby. Fourth Generation is a premium quality brand consisting of a selection of tin and loose tobaccos made in Denmark. Pipes, made of the finest quality briar and superior accessories from leather goods, lighters, and pipe tools. The selection of fourth generation products are available in premium pipe and cigar stores in the US and many European countries. Check out fourthgenpipetobacco.com. And we're back and and that was a fantastic ending of uh, sponsors right there Frank because it's a perfect lead on. That's right. If we can get Eric to come on right now from the green room. Yes, let's bring Eric on board. Let's get him on. Can you guys see me? Is oh, we, we, we hear you. You're in silhouette. Oh, yeah, a little, a little dark. A little dark. A little dark. Yeah, uh, yeah, let me yeah. Try yeah, something yeah. else. Try and, it. folks, we do have Mr. Eric Stokeby here this evening, our special guest. And uh, we are excited, as mm. all four of us wow. are also pipe aficionados. And, uh, mm. you know, Is Eric better? has been. Yes. Beautiful. Better, yeah, you yeah. look we marvelous. Go. You Before we thought you were in a uh, witness uh, relocation program. I am actually. That's my secret, but we'll talk about that some other time. Okay, perfect. Let's let's play the back up this video so nobody hears that from you. No, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, how are you, my man? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Oh my God, we're just right. awesome. Awesome. It, you didn't I, see it, but you know I had this on for you just in case you didn't make the show. 
Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Well, we you. said we we're going to have you, so we have you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was a little, uh, a little oh, late. No, but, sorry. Uh, no, no worries. It's all right. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Cool. Let me tell you, wow. Eric. Yeah. The first thing Bob said was, let's open this tin and let's yeah. just take in the smell. Oh, he yeah. opened up the tin oh. and we were like, he was like, he couldn't get his nose away from it. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. oh, yeah. Mm. It smelled yeah. delicious, and is that, it is that the uh, Maxis Blend uh, ten? This is oh, the nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, the birth year of uh, our son Max. Oh, so, okay. Uh, that's uh, Maxis Blend, or it's dedicated to him, I should say. Oh, okay. We just so, had him on two weeks ago, too. Yeah. Yeah. Good timing. And, yeah, it is good timing, and uh, but it's a nice, it's a nice flake tobacco with a. Yep. With a little bit of uh, uh, perique in it, and uh, but some really nice mature Virginias, and a yeah. uh, little bit of a citrus note to it. So. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, quite a bit. Yes, quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, I love yeah. it. It's, that was one of the things I first got off when I opened this up. The smell, and I was like, first I was hit with that like nice Virginia, almost a sweetness to it, and then you yeah. really, you really dive in and you get that citrusy. Uh, yeah. overtone to it. it it just it blew me away i i've, I've been salivating waiting for this moment to start smoking this because <laughs> oh, i'm like oh i gotta i gotta get it in <laughs> wow is it good so so what was the genesis of this uh particular blend when you were kind of creating it uh well uh you know i always wanted to do something that was um you know, I love flake tobacco, so let me just put it that way. And uh, I think, you know, it's just, I like the way they smoke. It's a slower smoke, and uh, it's a little more dense. And uh, But I wanted to have something that had a little, uh, you know, a little citrus and a little, uh, a little sweetness to it with, from the sugars in the, um, in the Virginia. So, um, yeah, I mean... You know, a uh, little blending, and uh, you find out, you try some, and you find out what you want, and eventually you you'll you'll get it. So, uh, but I was very excited about launching this one, and uh, uh, you know, we I talked to a lot of customers about it, and uh, everybody was excited, and it's doing really well. So, uh, nice, so I can very, see why. Yeah, yeah very very exciting. This Eric, will be how, in my, def, definitely in my rotation, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, like how do you come tackle. up with these ideas? And I mean, is there some, like, what makes you start thinking uh, how to put blends together? Uh, uh, how do you do it? What, what goes on in your mind? It's really, uh, you know, it's kind of often what's trending, you know, uh, it can be what's trending on the cigar side, but also, of course, what's trending on the the pipe side. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, like flake tobaccos, I would say within the last two to three years have been really hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, gotcha. it's very hot right now. And as a matter of fact, it's so it's it's such a hot blend, uh, blends that, uh, you know, people are. A lot of customers been out of it, and uh, manufacturers been out, and they can't produce enough. So, uh, which is kind of an interesting trend because I think that you know a lot of the uh, younger adult smokers that come into learning smoking a pipe, I think they're into this uh, specialty uh, tobaccos, i.e., flake or English blends or you know, blends that are made, uh, oppressed and then made into discs, right. you know, really unique blends. And it, it seems like that's like the trending thing right now or it has been for the last couple of years. Now, mm -hmm. Eric, uh, does, does it being, uh, a flake, does, does, do you think that it makes it easier for the novice, uh, pipe smoker to smoke? Is it easier to keep lit, uh, than maybe traditional tobacco? Uh, it's not easier to keep lit, so you have to have some experience, I would say, because uh, it goes out more quickly than, let's say, you're smoking an aromatic. Right. So, so you do need some experience, but I think once you are into, you know, smoking pipe tobacco and something you really want to 
do more and learn right. about it. I think that's that's the route to go. Gotcha. So, I, I, I think a lot of people, especially if they're coming from the cigar world, mm -hmm. they don't realize that a pipe is more of a meditative, you know, something that you have to baby and go with. It's not like a cigar where you can, you know, light it once, put, you know, suck on it, and then put it down for five, ten minutes, come back to it, and it's still lit and everything. Right. Like a pipe right. is something you're meant to enjoy you know you're in the moment you're you're you don't have to worry about what's going on around you this is this is yeah. just my meditative state right now yeah yeah exactly yeah i agree with that yeah that's cool now, now coming from a a long line of tobacconists mm -hmm. uh are some of the original blends that uh i guess your great grandfather at this point uh, created are those things that were uh, kind of the formulas were, were were kept so that you can bring those back in any way or are those things kind of lost no actually you know they don't go back that far I mean most of the formulas or the blends that I've been involved in and you know that the pipe tobacco has really been uh, or that we put on the market really go back goes back to my father so it's like you know it's back to the 70s 80s okay. maybe so it's not that so going back to my great grandfather you know he did produce a little bit of pipe tobacco but it was mostly like nasal snuff and uh and some cigars because uh you know at that time in uh in europe you know people were using a lot of nasal snuff and uh, they were smoking right. some cigars and pipe tobacco was kind of a new thing uh, not a new thing but it was kind of it wasn't as popular at that time so you know he had the production of a little bit of everything and then his retail store in front where he sold it and uh, so that's how you know that's how even my grandfather's factory also was uh, different productions, tobacco productions at different uh, at different floors that they had. He had four four floors in the factory. So gotcha, oh, Eric. Yeah. What is the oldest recipe that you still are producing? I think from the seventies. Oh yeah, I would say. Producing? I would say yeah. I would say. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Yeah, maybe late seventies, early eighties, some somewhere in there. Mm. Somewhere. Which, what, what? 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 Well, it's, it's an aromatic, you know, aromatics are still the most popular and, you know, we, uh, uh, Lane Limited or at that time Lane Limited, they had two popular blends for sold loose called BCA and 1Q and, mm -hmm. which, and everybody in the, wor in the world, including us, we tried to copy that because it was extremely popular. And gotcha. one, of, one of the blends that we put out was, you know, kind of a, our answer to the 1Q blend but not quite the same, uh, but it, you know, it did well and uh, it's still around. So, uh, yeah. I think one Q might be probably the most popular. It's probably in, in loose tobacco. It's the yeah. best selling blend still and has been, I would venture to say for the last uh, 45 years, almost 50 wow. years. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, it's crazy. Kind of dominance. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. It really <laughs> is. So, but like I said before, I mean, you know, I think that's changing a little bit. Um, you know, I think a lot of the younger guys that are coming into smoking a pipe, you know, they, they, they want something that's a little more unique. It's almost like craft beer. If you right. will, they want something right. that's really unique and different and have different taste directions and so forth, yeah. you know? So it's, uh, I think over, you know, over time, it's going to, that picture is going to change a little bit. So, Eric, we do have a question from one of our uh, faithful listeners. We call him mm -hmm. the earthling man himself, Mr. Bruce right. Stark. He would okay. like to know is, explain for the novice what aromatic means, please. Well, uh, aromatic is just a term, and it basically means that it's been, the tobacco or the blend has been top flavored. That is uh, one of the last um, elements or one of the last stages in the production of pipe tobacco, you add the top flavor if it is an aromatic blend. And that addition can be a flavor of cherry or vanilla or, you know, whatever you can think of. So that's right. the top. When you open a tin or a pouch of tobacco and you smell something like a cherry or vanilla, 
that means it's an aromatic. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, gotcha. And, ar and aromatics also tend to be a little bit moist, more moist than, right. for example, English blends or more flake tobacco. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So that's an aromatic. Okay. Hopefully, Bruce, that worked out for you. <laughs> And uh, what do we got here? I'm smoking a Stokeby 1957 mixture uh, in a dark porter pipe made for uh, for Peter, his company by uh, uh, Peter Jefferson. Yeah. Can Mr. Jefferson, Stokeby yeah. comment on the blending of the 57 mixture? Yes. Well, thank you for smoking uh, the 1957 uh, mixture. That's my year. I'm dating myself here. <laughs> uh, is that your year too, Bob? No, 50. No, he's 52. Bob <laughs> is 52. He goes I'm, way I'm back. 59, so I'm a youngster to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the 1957 is actually, it's a very light Virginia. Um, with It's an aromatic light Virginia, and it has a little bit of uh, vanilla uh, vanilla, vanilla topping to it or a vanilla flavor to it. So, so that's it. A very basic, uh, basic light Virginia blend. So, great. Well, oh, nice. Very how nice. long when, uh, was this in the process the, uh, for your sons, for Max, the 1980? Uh, how long did it take you to put this uh, together? I think it took, I want to say nine months. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Same time it took him to be born. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it was a long process so yeah so you consider nine months a long process in a uh, uh yeah, tobacco well, well, maybe not i mean i i would say normally and i would say from the idea is born to it's on the market nine to twelve months right that makes yeah. sense okay. yeah All yeah right. yeah that does make so, sense now yeah. when uh, when you're looking at your overall sales, mm -hmm. as far as dominance in the in in the marketplace, uh, where does the U.S. fall uh, in comparison to some of the European markets or, or, or Asian markets? Uh, uh, where do you see the majority of your sales coming from? Well, the majority of our sales is by far the U.S. Uh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just got some in here. Sorry. That's okay. Do what you got to do. Business first. <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, it was a, it was a pop up. So yes, the U.S. because that's really in 2012 uh, is where I started the brand. Right. But we, we have since uh, uh, introduced it in some of the European markets and, uh, and also now in some markets in the Far East. And uh, I was just in Dortmund for the Intersebach show in September, and we just launched it in. On the German market, which is pretty exciting because Germany is and has always been the biggest pipe tobacco market in in Europe. So, uh, hmm. we're, and and we did really well. So, um, bigger than England? Yes, yes, for sure. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, yes, there's some really, really nice pipe shops in Germany. Not there's there's also some in in, in England, of course, but there are really some. Really, really, uh, really nice uh, pipe shops in, in Germany. So, mm -hmm. so how was this uh, year's Inter Tabak show, by the way? How how did that go? I, well, for us, it went very well. Uh, okay. And I think overall, I think people were pretty pleased. I think the people okay. had good show. It was it was busy, very busy. Uh, good, good. good. Uh, so uh, definitely, you know, here to stay. I mean, I you know, it's I don't. As a matter of fact, just like. Uh, PCA, you know, some of the big cigar companies who haven't been there, but I think also they may return there uh, next year. So, so uh, no, great and very beautiful booths, you know. So it was, it was very, it was, it was pretty exciting. Now, how does Italy fall in? I mean, I know there's some great Italian pipe, pipe makers. makers of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Italy is also a pretty decent pipe tobacco market. Uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of these Southern European markets, such as Italy uh, and Spain, um, they were all, uh, they were, the distribution was owned by the state. Right. And then, and then it was broken up, but it's still, it's still, it, it's still, you have to go through the state and then hire a company to do the distribution for you. Right. So it's, it's a little, it's a little complicated. 
uh, but um, uh, both markets are pretty good, uh, pretty good pipe uh, pipe markets. So yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was there, all the cigarettes had to go through the state. Right. Yeah, yeah. State controlled and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so um, yeah, so it, it's good. And, you know, what's interesting also now is that, you know, with the EU expansion, we had a lot of people from the ex uh, Eastern European countries like uh, Slovakia and Slovenia and some of the mm-hmm. uh, Hungary that came up and, and wanted to, were very interested in, in getting the, the brand. So, uh, oh, that's excellent. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Excellent. excellent. So yeah. when, you're, when you're sourcing your tobacco, mm-hmm. uh, do you are you looking at the raw tobacco? Uh, or are you getting it already pre fermented and uh, basically ready for blending? I don't really, uh, well, I don't really uh, get involved so much, but there is a leaf tobacco tobacco department. They do buy all of their leaf tobaccos, but they buy it for, you know, all of the, all of the different blends. Oh, and, okay. and uh, you know, each blend typically consists of about 13 to 15 different leaf tobaccos. Different wow. grades, you know, leaf tobacco right. is graded. Right. So it's the, consists of uh, thirteen to fifteen different grades uh, of a Virginia or Burley, and uh, and that is so that because it's a farm product, you can exchange a grade in the blend in next year if you can't get exactly the same grade, and right. it won't really have a uh, big impact on the taste of the uh, blend. Oh, okay. So that's so why that's, you have a use. You have to use a big range of different. Right, products. right. Because it's otherwise, you get caught. You could get stuck. It gets stuck, and it's uh, important because you know it's a farm product we have to deal with. So it's going to be it's going to change uh, from every harvest to to another. Right, right. Yeah. Now, right. are these Virginians in this particular blend? Are these American or? It's a con. It's it's. I believe this one. Uh, it's it. There are maybe a little bit of U.S. Uh, Virginia in there, but most of it's is African. I, I believe. African. Yeah. yeah. See, African is providing a oh, lot of tobacco. Yeah, they're pumping out a lot. They're what is going on that you know in it's Africa? Forced, because yeah. they yeah. are really coming up with a lot of stuff, even through in the well, cigar Af- industry. Africa has always been, uh, you know, not every country, but. Uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, yep. uh, some of these countries, uh, they have always been big producers of uh, tobacco. So, you know, um, they're, they, they're definitely, they're, they're big producers. And, and, and they're very good quality. Uh, right, very, right. Well, their so- soil is some of the most fertile soil in yeah. the world. Right, so, exactly. Uh, I, can, I can understand producing great tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the, no, definitely. I'm mean, there up there, you know, among, uh, quality wise to comparable to the U S and, 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 and Brazil and some of these countries. So for sure. Yeah. The Perique obviously is here. Perique is just in Louisiana. Yeah. St. James. St. James. Yeah. And, uh, just, uh, one of, Two families. Yeah, Saint kind of. Saint James County, or whatever that is. Um, not the county. They call it uh something different. Uh, uh, parish. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. parish. Yeah. So not Saint James Infirmary. Don't get no, that mixed uh, no, up no, with no, the, no, the no. Song. So, so there. I mean, that's a very low lying. I mean, Louisiana is basically you know one foot above uh sea level. level. Yeah, one yeah, level. yeah, yeah. Foot below. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, do you think the Perique? giving that flavor profile is very distinct to that because of the region that it's, it's grown in. It's only like there. That's uh, uh, no, it's really the, uh, it's really the treatment of the tobacco. So it's, it's almost like fermented, you know, the okay. leaf tobacco in these barrels and uh, it's uh, the tobacco in itself. As far as I know, it's kind of like an offshoot to a burly. Okay. And, and the, the fermentation and the sauce that they use is really that's kind of the secret and that's what makes it so unique. Gotcha. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a small production, uh, but you know, it's still there, but it's, you know, Perique is like salt and pepper. Uh, you don't want to put too much on it because right. it's, it's going to be too strong. Right. That's so, too much. I get a bite. Yeah. I get a very bad bite. Yeah, out of it. 
exactly. Exactly. Can handle if it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Some people like it, but not for me. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and yeah. yeah exactly. Portions, it makes the right but thing. But isn't that the same with uh, Latakia blends? Latakia, I can smoke. La Latakia <laughs> is different. So <laughs> typically, you know, in uh, Perique, you would use, you know, I would say one to five percent in a blend, and typically uh -huh. two percent maybe. And then um, uh, Latakia, you know, you can go up to like fifteen percent. Uh, so what Latakia is, it's actually oriental tobacco mm -hmm. that's smoke cured. So oriental tobacco is normally sun cured, but uh, this is smoke cured. And uh, oriental tobacco is normally very aromatic in itself. Uh -huh. uh, and do, because of the smoking process, it gets very uh, peaty and, um, and smoky. Yeah, so, like a uh, campfire in your mouth, you know? Exactly, but it's not It's not strong. It's not oh. necessary. Oh, not, not, at all. Not, not at all. So it's a pretty mild smoke if you just smoke it by itself. Uh, I have. It's, it's going to be very, it's going to be, it's going to be like drinking a scotch that's extremely peaty. That's yeah. interesting. You know, it's funny because I don't like a very peaty scotch. Yeah. But there I love my idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. You know, yeah. I've never been a huge fan, but uh, I know some guys, they swear by it. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, but I, I like, uh, I like, uh, I like oriental tobaccos mm -hmm. because of the aroma they, they have. So, yeah. So Steve says oriental tobacco always reminds me of benediction for all you Catholics <laughs> out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Frankincense. yeah. The frankincense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right on that, Steve. That's for sure. <laughs> That's great. That's Interesting. Funny. Interesting. Yeah. So, funny. um, how quickly do you go into your next idea for blends? I mean, I know we're just talking about the, you know, the 1989. Yeah. Uh, do you already have stuff in the works? Um, you know, I don't I mean, have anything in the works right now, uh, but I have some thoughts of what I want to do next. But, um, you know, I don't know, maybe sometime in 2024. We'll see. Okay. Oh, did you say Latakia? I mean, <laughs> no, uh, not. We have a couple of those, so no, not Latakia, but uh, I got some other ideas. But we'll we'll see. We nice. do have. We are working on uh, what, uh, limited edition, which will be out in uh, March 2024. Oh, so we're oh, gonna be in for the for the uh, show for the PCA. PCA. Yeah, yeah, that's when we are releasing it. So this is gonna be our seventh, sixth or seventh uh, limited edition. Oh, and nice! It's, it's okay. Pretty pretty exciting stuff because uh, we always sell out pretty quickly. So right. uh, so it's very exciting. So and that is uh, in the works. So when so, you so, when you produce a limited edition, mm -hmm. uh, what is that? in terms of either poundage or and or you know tints sure. amounts what are we looking at yeah. at, at amounts so when we did it the first year i think we did 500 maybe okay yeah that is a limited edition That's yeah pretty small. Limited edition. so mm -hmm. this year we did 4000 and we're okay. thinking about doing 5000 next year so oh, great. wow okay so right. yeah so it's uh, it's increasing uh, so Great. the demand is Great. definitely there. So again, you know, it, um, it it speaks to comparably to you know the 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 craft beer where you have a lot of these limited editions as well. Cigar, the cigar industry, you know, I've right. had it for years. So right. And uh, when I started it uh, six or seven years ago, uh, you know, nobody has ever done a limited edition on pipe tobacco. So I thought, let's do it. Let's you know. Why not? Uh, why not? So right. uh, mm -hmm. trailblazing. Uh, yeah, exactly. And now there are several people or uh, several manufacturers are doing it. So it's right. fun. It's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the industry. Uh, it keeps the industry. It keeps the the category interesting. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, there's some newsworthiness to it, and uh, it's a good thing that it's being done. Yeah, I agree yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. So, uh, have you seen? I don't know. Do you do studies to see uh, what is the increasing population as far as pipe smokers 
ages and uh, sex. I, I think more and more women are smoking pipes now than ever before, just like their cigars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know uh, if women, but it could be. I mean, I haven't seen anything. I did see uh, something uh, last summer that there is, there seems to be a trend that there are more pipe smokers now than, say, 10, 15 years ago. Yes, for sure. And, and yeah. the reason for that is that a lot of young guys, they think it's cool. It's, well, it's a cool thing, you know, <laughs> it's a social thing. So it does, you know, the, the comparably to older pipe smokers, they don't smoke as much. The younger guys, they meet up maybe two or three times a week. And that's right. when they, they get out the pipes and they start smoking. So poundage-wise, it's it's not as much as it used to be. But a uh, number of smokers, there are more. Increasing. Okay? Right. Increasing no question about it. We so see that I, at the Chicago Pipe Club. We were getting yeah. new members, and they're right. younger all the younger, time. Every and year. It's so exciting to see the young ones it's, coming in. I think uh, it's very exciting, yeah. Oh, it is because yeah. as the the elders die off, you know, and they, or they don't want to go and, and mingle with so many people, you know, right. the young guys, like you said, they come in and it's a happening for them, you know. They exactly. sit down in a lounge and they're able to smoke and talk yeah. and drink and you know yeah. all that kind of thing. So we definitely have seen that here at the Chicago Pipe Club, and mm -hmm. our friend Jamie Connolly, he started the Milwaukee Pipe Club, and. uh I think like this one elder, a friend of ours, Dave, is the oldest, and everybody else is in their forties, twenties. I mean, we had oh, a yeah. kid there who's eighteen years old, wow. <laughs> and, and he is so into it. And uh, you well, know, it, it's great to see yeah, the yeah. young people getting into it, and maybe it's relaxing them more. Like uh, mm -hmm. they're getting to a different head, they can study more in college and chill a little right. bit more. And sure. a pipe is even more relaxing than a cigar. Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I started when I was fifteen. Yeah, really. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, have old school. I was sixteen. Anyway. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, for the novice, do tobacco blends pair with different types of pipes better than others, or yes. or does all pipes, or all does the pipe even matter, or change the flavor at all? No, it does matter. It does absolutely. It does, mm -hmm. it does matter. Yeah, I mean. Uh, pair better with pipes. I don't know. You know, there are uh, there are good pipes and there are, there are, you know bad pipes. But I always recommend if you are an aromatic and an English smoker uh, or a flake smoker, have a pipe for each right uh, uh, category, if you yeah. will. Particularly the English, because Latakia will leave a residue uh, in the pipe bowl. And you will be able to taste it next time you smoke yeah. it. So they call that ghosting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Ghost, ghost the pipe. Yeah. Yeah. So I would definitely have, and 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 also for aromatic, they can also depending on which aromatic, but they can leave a little bit of residue in the pipes as well. So I would keep it mm -hmm. kind of. I would keep it, you know, a pipe for each, uh, bl uh, not blend, but each category, if you will. Right. So yeah. if you were to put in into the same, let's say you're using a pipe just for <clears throat> aromatics. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're using, let's just say you're, you've got a cherry blend mm -hmm. and you smoke that. And then uh, tomorrow you'll pick up vanilla and, and smoke that. Will you have a little bit of that cherry overtone possible. that might uh, yeah, add to that? It's possible. So it yeah, may possible. change just that. The that flavor altogether. Flavor altogether. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's best to really, and I'm hearing it more and more. Um, the old, the old timers, they don't care. They smoke that pipe, and you, right. you, you had like a, a, a nail head to stick in there because right. they didn't <laughs> scrape their bowls. But uh, yeah, well, it's crazy. But the younger know. ones now, they're separating and said, "This pipe yeah. is going to be for the average. This is going to be for the uh, uh, yeah." And it, and it's happening more and more, and it's understood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the older guys were also very brain loyal. You know, they were, yes. they, if you smoke Captain Black, uh, you know, you smoke Captain Black till you died. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, as is, you know, or Sir Walter Raleigh and so forth, they were very, very brain loyal. It was hard to get them to try anything else. Now, the younger guys, on the other hand, they'll try everything. Mm -hmm, so right. it's a different, it's a different, different pipe smoker altogether. Well, the young ones don't 
really yeah. know what what they like yet. So yeah. it's yeah. smart of them to experience and try everything mm-hmm. and and to see what really works with their palate and what they like. Oh, this is good. And like I said, I yeah. mean, everybody's different. So there's yeah. not a there's exactly. not a fantastic tobacco. It's not a bad tobacco. It's what that individual sure. tastes. Like. Well, when I started smoking, I had one pipe, and I every week because I would go through a pouch of mm-hmm. tobacco a week, I would buy a different one and oh, try yeah. something different every week. Huh. You know? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Until yeah. I got my second pipe. And then, right, right. <laughs> and then of course, it took off from there. <laughs> and now he only has about 800 pipes That's or about so. it. <laughs> Why you say 800 to 1,000? Is Mary listening? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it gets crazy in the industry. It really you does have, becomes a habit. Because yeah, like yeah. Ronnie said, you know, if you don't try different things, you don't know what you're missing. Right. That's, true. that's the reality. You're missing things. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. true. I, I hope that this tobacco is not uh, going to be in limited quantities because no, 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 no. Uh, that's part of the standard this program. Is delicious. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm glad you like it. Wow. Beautiful. Yes, very Beautiful. much. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I'm what I love about it is it leaves your mouth so clean, clean very clean, yeah. very clean. So yeah. you don't yeah. feel a bit uh, an aftertaste or anything. Right. Just, Frank, if you would, because oh, we I oh. can't answer the uh, Facebook crowd that's oh. answering, but we might want to pop them because I can't get or answer them on my cell phone uh, with the uh, f- Facebook crowd. Yes, but if you look at some of the uh, uh, the YouTube crowd, they've got things that they're talking about yeah. and mentioning. Okay, yeah. uh, they. Dan says, when using the same tobacco in a briar and a meerschaum, mm-hmm. it tastes and smokes differently. Yes, it does. Uh, so yeah, I would say that's true. I mean, uh, meerschaum, by, I, you know, I don't own one, but I have smoked one. I think meerschaum, smoke from a meerschaum is more, it's a cleaner smoke because uh, it, it just doesn't absorb the flavors of a tobacco like a briar a briar briar pipe would do will do right uh, Bisham will not do that as far as i know so i would agree yes it is a different different experience smoking right and, yeah. and how about smoking i've never smoked a clay pipe uh how different very is- same i would say almost compared with Mirsham. it's very clean uh, so uh-huh. actually in the leaf tobacco departments, that's the guys uh, who are testing out leaf tobacco. That's all they use is clay pipes. Always. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because and that's, that's, it's that's clean. It's it, so, it, 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 yeah. Interesting. It'll give you, it will give you the, the best purest, flavor like of the that purest. tobacco. Yeah, yes, the, the purest. purest. Exactly. Yeah, the purest. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So yeah, the yeah. corn cob, though. Corn cob is very good for it, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that can also be used. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> that's yeah. super interesting mm-hmm. i'm getting mm-hmm. a lot of information here Bob. well you know jeremy yeah. will always try jeremy reeves for, yeah, for, sure. you know, he will always smoke in a clay pipe always when he's blending when he's blending it will yeah, always yeah. Be in the yeah. Clay. yeah yeah i think that's uh, a lot of guys do that so yep. that makes sense well, eric what is yeah. your favorite tobacco and or pipe combination well, let's call it <laughs> i put you on wow. the spot do, do you need time to think about it? Should we go to our we sponsors and come back to you? Give him a You put him on the spot. Let him think I'm about right. it. Let's go to our sponsors, and we'll be right back with Eric's okay. Okay. <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Hit All the right. share button, people. Right. Cigar in the Bottle is two palate-pleasing gifts in one. A specially blended Grand Pommier XS VSOP Cognac is elegantly contained in patented numbered bottles. Winner of back-to-back-to-back-to-back medals at the LA Spirits Awards, Cigar in the Bottle inventor for Bidden Johnny teams up with Vartan and Hendrik Hellner for this custom blended Vartan Reserva Cigar, well preserved in a hand-blown glass chamber Featuring Bovita two-way humidification. At Norwood Royal Cigars, we have the biggest walk-in humidor in the Midwest. Our 1,500-square-foot humidor is home to almost 4,000 different cigars that will meet the need of any cigar enthusiast. We have boutique blends to the more traditional selections and everything in between. From the novice beginner to the aficionado, 
the knowledgeable staff at NRC will find the perfect cigar for you. Located on the northwest side of Chicago, we want to be your shop for all your cigar wants and needs. As always, at Norwood Royal Cigars, light it, smoke it, love it. Experience the magic of Rockefeller Cigars today. With 11 years steeped in tradition, passion, and mystery of belief, Rockefeller has a cigar just for you. Be like the greatest magicians and make Rockefeller Cigars appear in your lineup with any of our four lines. The Nicaraguan, the Dominican Blue, the Vintage Gold, and our new Ellie, the Art of Magic. Over the Rhine Premium Cigars is located in the heart of Cincinnati, 50 yards south of historic Finley Market. We offer both known brands and the finest boutique cigars available. Feel free to bring your favorite beverage and relax in dude daycare, where dudes of all genders are welcome. We look forward to serving you at Over the Rhine Premium Cigars. And we are a proud member of the Boutique Cigar Association. All begins at the very first climate-controlled Rodriguez Olivan Cigar Factory, located in the Dominican Republic. Our two major brands include Don Olivan, which are boutique cigars suited for that individual who takes great pride in something unique. BAMF is our armed forces cigars designed for that badass mother effort. Not only are you smoking a great premium cigar, a percentage of the proceeds is donated to our heroic men and women in uniform. And we are back, folks. Back. Okay. Well, I was just telling Frank, a lot of people don't like Virginians because you have to smoke them slow because they burn so hot. Not this. Yeah. This right. is cool. My pipe mm -hmm. is cold. It's, Fantastic. It's beautiful. I love it. That's great. Uh, I had to repack empty. another bowl because my bowl is, you know, a lot empty. smaller than Bob's. That's, mm. that's cool. Mm. Hey, Eric, how many yeah. different blends do you guys have under your portfolio right now? Uh, so we have seven tins and we have five loose bulk tobaccos. Oh, okay. So wow. got that. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Is, nice. is this one available in bulk? No. Not yet? No, 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 none of it. No, they actually the tins and the bulk is two is separate. Two they, separate they, lines. Two yeah, separate. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Two separate. Uh, so none of the tins is available in bulk, and the bulk is not available in tin. So. So when you're purchasing okay. bulk, uh, are you purchasing by the ounce? How how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So you buy it by the ounce uh, from a shop. You buy it, you mm -hmm. know, two ounces, four ounces, whatever. So yeah. Gotcha. Pretty straight. Pound. Pound. I buy by the pound. 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 Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but to answer your question before, we do have also a very nice flake tobacco called Navy Flake. Uh, mm. oh, in yeah. the uh, line of our uh, bulk tobaccos. Mm. Uh, e evening Flake, sorry, Evening Flake. And that mm. is probably right now, I mean, I've had many over the years, but right now that's probably my favorite tobacco. And I like to smoke it in our pipe of the year, made by Bruno Nuttons uh, wow. out of out of France. Oh, and cool. uh, really, really cool pipes. He makes really wonderful pipes. Uh, and that's so to answer. That's my favorite combination right now. Oh, okay. Very nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and he always been uh, a fan of the, fan of the Navy Flake. I love. I yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do too. And you know, it comes from uh, the British uh, Navy uh, back in, you know, 300 years ago, whenever that's how they used to trade uh, on the boat because there was so little space that they couldn't really have a lot of stuff with them. So they traded the tobacco in flake because it was compressed. And mm, then right. they traded that to get something else, you know, food or whatever. So that's why it's called over the you know, they call it Navy Flake. So, oh, so they track it. Go. And it's going back story. to our, our roots in American history, too, where tobacco was a currency. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. It yeah. all comes around. Everything is tobacco is a currency. Yeah, yeah. 
a lot of history. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So cool. So Eric, will you be coming to the uh, Chicago Pipe Show in April? I will. I will. I'm excited about nice. it. And nice. uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited about it. And uh, we hope to have some new stuff by then. And uh, well, the new one should be the one that you said in March it, it should be ready be for us in April. Better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have also uh, a couple of new pipes to work on. So yeah. Oh, so it should be good. Awesome. I think I, a question right here is, can Mr. Stokeby talk about the pipes that various carvers make for his company and how he decides whose pipes to have represent fourth gen? That's, That's a question, good. Steve. Yeah. Good Very good, yeah. Steve. That's deep. That's a good uh, question. Yeah. So I started with uh, Peter Yevson or Peter Nero in 2012. And it really it was a good uh, cooperation with him for... 10, 12 years, but uh, as with many, um, as with many of these pipe carvers, pipe makers, uh, Briar has been the last couple of years very hard for them to get. Right. So we had to we had to stop, unfortunately, because he could just couldn't get enough Briar. So uh, otherwise, you know, I would have continued with him, of course. Um, but then I work also with Antoine Girard uh, from. Oh, yeah. uh, from the uh, Kamoy, uh, Chacom, uh, Chacom, yes. Chacom, yeah. Chacom, yeah. And uh, he's just a great guy and very he good is. relationship, you know, and he works well with the Ranko Cigar Company as well. So, right. so that's just a natural fit. I think he's just, I, I've known him for, for many years. And then actually Antoine introduced me to Bruno here a couple of years ago at the Chicago at Pipe Show. And uh, that's how we started working up, you know, a, a line. And, you know, I really like these pipes, but it's, it really, you know, I got to see what they're making. And then, you know, if I see this is could be fit into our line, then yeah, you know, let's go with it. Um, so, but, you know, there's been others too, but I said, yeah, maybe. So, right. yeah, it's got to have, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty, Conscientious about quality and you know and I know you have to, you should be, be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So your that's your name's on it, so you've right. got to make yeah. sure it's the right thing and it fits you. That it's exactly. you. Exactly. What you're exactly. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So definitely, we'll have uh, during the show. Uh, Bob uh, and uh, Frank and we're hoping Kyle could come up and we'll be going around the show and uh, doing some more interviews and maybe you can show off the uh, the new stuff that you got also so we can put it here on, on our show again and yeah, uh, we're looking forward to that and we now, have do you have questions. a website? Uh, yeah, do you have a 4th Gen Tobacco? We have the 4th uh, Gen Pipe Tobacco.com Gotcha. Which is uh, basically pictures of the uh, product assortment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can go. Bruce, take that. a look at it. You know, uh, pipe smoking is real nice, relaxing, mm -hmm. right up what you need there, especially on those long walks that he does. <laughs> it really does work out. So, you got a yeah. lot of people coming in. Oh, right. okay. There you go. Fourth generation uh, tobacco.com. Very good. Yeah. Right. Frank, did you get all that or was that Kyle? That was me. I was able good. to uh, yeah. quick, that fingers, up, uh, quick fingers, quick uh, fingers. Quick fingers. Yes, nice. I'm a quick study, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my type. Uh, that's my typing instructor from uh, eighth grade. <laughs> she showed me the very the, long the, time ago. Yeah, two finger plucking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how quick? How quick, how quick can quick you get? You, <laughs> was, you know how? You, you remember those classes? Yeah. I, and people were getting like 60, 70 words a minute, 80 words a minute. I was struggling. I think if I got 25 words a minute, I was lucky. 20, yeah, high school, we had we had to do 40 in high school. <laughs> you had to get to 40. I know, and it was yep. a struggle. No way. No way. Very hard. Very yeah. hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have another question here from one of our other okay. loyal listeners. Uh, right. How well does the tobacco age and there is a sweet spot to smoke it? Uh, well, the sweet spot to smoke it? I don't get that sweet spot. Is there a sweet spot? Meaning, is there a, a time that you should smoke? Yeah. Right? Half a bowl at the end of the bowl? No, no, no the time no, no. to smoke it, right? I think the time to age. Aging, yes, yeah. aging. Well, so most, most, uh, most 
leaf tobaccos that are used in the blends are generally two to three years old before they actually use in production. So, and then, uh, you know, if you get a tin, the vacuum sealed tin, you know, you can keep it for 10 years. And this, I mean, it's ready to smoke when you buy it. Uh, right. And if it's vacuum sealed, it's really not going to change a whole lot because there's no air coming to it. So, you know, I would say when you buy it, smoke it. Right. You know, uh, that's, always best. that's always the best way. Well, uh, well, a lot of people yeah. sell it. What we call sell it. We put them in, in mason jars, the ball jars. Sure. And, and you can keep it really for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I know some pipe collectors, they have huge amount of tobacco at home. Uh, but, yeah, uh, we, it'll, it will last for a long time if it's, see, if it's sealed correctly. Yes. Because we had a tobacco at the Chicago Pipe Tobacco Show. It was called the Jack of Diamonds, and it was released back in the late 50s, right, mm -hmm. Bob? Yes. And okay. somebody opened up the tin, yeah. fresh, freshly opened. Sealed from the 50s. It yeah. Was and it 52. was, yeah, it was, it was 52. I think Bob, wasn't it? Your was, uh, uh, birthday. Yeah. Yeah. birthday. When I was born, yeah. And <laughs> what was amazing about 1852. that. 1852. Wasn't that, isn't that the tobacco that kind of almost uh, felt like caramel it and was, a honey? It was unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, to try to describe it is almost difficult. Right. But it was probably one of the best tobaccos I ever smoked. Oh, wow. I don't know if it and was just the age. 70 years. Yeah. Wow. It was yeah. basically 70, 70 years, years in that tin. And yeah. the tin was in perfect condition. And he just passed it around. Everybody was just like flipping out over it. Yeah. Like, wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I've, uh, I had, when we, when I was in Denmark here um, in August, uh, I had a guy bring over uh, a cigarette from 1955, I think it was like, it was a British cigarette, Virginia cigarettes, and he said, you want to try it? I said, sure, I'll try it, and then it, it was, it was pretty damn mellow. Right. So, you know, um, so yeah, I guess it will, it will mellow out over years. And That's when right. cigarettes used to come in sealed tins. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, uh, but but exactly. cigarettes back then weren't processed that tobacco no. was processed the way it was processed later. No, no because it in the didn't UK, have all those chemicals in it. It was pure they, tobacco. Yeah, in the UK, you were never allowed to use any kind of flavors or, or chemicals or anything like that. It was the pure thing. It was the all. It was just the leaf tobacco, basically. Right. So yeah. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. Right. Well, if uh, we're reading all the questions from our audience, I tell you okay. what, Frank, should we get ready for the uh, yeah. the grand finale? The yes. and you know the section and that everybody likes. Everybody okay. loves this part of the program. We go right. and we do. I I love history. I'm a history buff. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. I I do a segment called Stump the Chooch. Now, okay. In Italian, I don't know if you're familiar with what the chooch is, and, and, uh, and I'm going to show you a glimpse of, of the chooch. Okay. Okay. Now, that chooch is the hardest working animal, and it's even though it's said that it's called a jackass. Right. <laughs> what what I chooch in Italian? Chooch yeah. in Italian. Chooch. Yes. Okay. I didn't That's know that. <laughs> so I try to stump the guys here and i'm going to try to stump you as well all right on these questions so be okay. aware after we come back from our sponsors and then what we do is we save one question for the audience okay. and we and what we like to do always is give them something that they can remember the show by and also uh uh yourself so okay. ron what are we giving uh away today well, on you how about a we are, well, how about that, maybe, friend? But <laughs> we are talking about tonight's tobacco. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we will be getting them a can of nice. fourth generation 1989. Mm. All right. So That's they'll be 34 able to years it. old. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should know that because it's my wedding anniversary. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Cool. All right. But also, Bob, you, you open your mouth, but that's okay. <laughs> We're going to give you from RNA Treasures. We're going to get you a pipe here, brand yeah, new pipe. Nice. 
nice, oh, nice, oh, bowl, nice, nice and clean. Bowl. Yeah, Bob, you know all about these pipes, right? Oh yeah, excellent. Pipes. I love the finish on that pipe. Beautiful. Very, Beautiful very pipe. nice, guys. Very and nice. that's from our like friends at RNA Treasures. RNA Treasures. I love that. Nice deep bowl, man. Yeah. Is that yes. a billiard? Billiard, billiard shape. Yep. yep. You got a billiard. There you go. Excellent. Excellent that's pipe. From RNA, and uh, we're going to give you uh, a. Well, we said the pipe hook will also have the tamper. All right. Oh, yeah. In the plastic. And so the tamper, what is going to be? You're going to, it's going to open up here. And I'll get that here for a second. And uh, somehow, People some way. will be able to use this because yep. Ronnie hasn't used it yet. Not yet. You can tell he's no, never used it. This one. is he in. Can't it. He can't open there. it. He can't open it. It's sealed. <laughs> well, you know how my hands are, guys. Yes, it, it's so a mess. All right. You might, so, get, you might get Ronnie's used one. He keeps <laughs> the new one. No, 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 no. Bob, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. All right. So uh, this oh, is the multi what you get. Oh, right. multi tool. Nice. Okay. So that would be inside that plastic bag. All right. That's right. There you go. Beautiful, Ron. <laughs> and, you're, and, you're a nice guy. You know, I am because, you know, we, we have a wonderful guy, Eric, on. And okay. so when you carry your pipe and your tobacco, well, you got to put it in somewhere. Yeah. So here you go from oh. Lois, our man, no. Allie Gold, oh, no. your own personal oh, carry on ashtray. Holder. Built oh, it. Go. It's going to be, it almost looks like Star Trek, you know, the Enterprise it does. here. It does. But, yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, nice. Ron. That's it. So yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get the uh, the ashtray. You're All gonna right. get the tamper. You're gonna get the pipe, and you're gonna get the tobacco. Hey, that's, that's pretty good, right? right? That's a that's a great starter kit for anybody. Oh, are you who, kidding? Absolutely. That's absolutely. absolutely fantastic. So right after these words, folks, stay tuned because there's some great giveaways. Yeah. This industry is steeped in family and tradition. You know, there's generational stuff, and I see it over and over. And yet, no, I didn't come from that. Being the outsider looking in, I got to ask all the silly questions, and people were very accepting to want to give me all the right answers. I'm very thankful for those people who kind of allowed me to come in. Now with Alec and Bradley in the business, to have to have our company become generational, that's pretty cool. Welcome to GTO Dominican Cigars a boutique cigar company that artfully blends and creates some of the finest handmade puros from the Sabao Valley in the Dominican Republic. We are fourth generation manufacturers and growers of tobacco with over 140 years of experience offering a variety of styles, blends, and strengths. Mild, medium, medium plus, and full bodied. We would truly consider it an honor for you to experience our cigars. Those who know, smoke GTO. Before you light your next cigar, be sure to check out Cigar Medics, the makers of the patent-approved humidimeter. The humidimeter is a tool designed to display the relative humidity inside your cigar. With this device, there's no more guessing. Simply insert the probes into the foot or cap of your cigar, and you can instantly know if your cigar is ready to be smoked. Buy now on CigarMedics.com and see site for other cigar accessories. With the humidimeter, you'll know when to hold them and know when to smoke them. Years in the making, the Chief Cigar was born, blended, boxed, and released to market on June 26, 2015. This cigar was developed by former fire chief, firefighter, cigar aficionado, Ken Dorbecker, and has grown into a signature firehouse cigar line. All engines respond. Including, of course, The Chief, a Nicaraguan Habano blend, Proby, a Connecticut Shade Blend, All Hands, a Maduro Mexican San Andreas Box Press, and the brand new Fire Pole, a beautifully crafted San Andreas Habano Barber Pole. Join the Chief family and make us part of your humidor. R&A Treasures, out of Tampa Bay, Florida. The last of a legacy. The last of an inventory of Thomas Cristiano in a warehouse where everything is aged and well kept for all your pipe and smoking needs. And we are we back, are back, folks. Awesome, awesome. I'm ready to ask you guys some questions. Kyle probably had to go take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. 
Everybody <laughs> just got He's back. back. Let's make sure Bruce is back. Bruce is always back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Bruce is smoking. He just received his pipe that he won, what, last week or the yes. one with Max? Oh, okay. And he's smoking it now. Yeah, Bruce nice. says, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he's smoking it now. And uh, what's Josh saying? I'm a huge fan of pipes. Um, I smoke pretty much every day. I'm up to six pipes in uh, in under just oh. two years. Very good. Awesome. Very good. Congratulations, Josh. Awesome. Excellent. A long ways to go, Josh. If you win, if you do win this tobacco, I can tell you, you're going to really enjoy it, and you're probably going to get online to order more because uh, yeah. it's fabulous. It really awesome. is awesome. really, really so nice. Smoke. Here's a question for you guys. On today's date, October 3rd, 1952, Bob was not born yet. Almost. Uh, just a month away. Uh, just a month, month away. away. <laughs> One month away from Bob's birthday. Tea rationing ends after 12 years in what country? 12 years, Bob. Tea rationing. Can you imagine this? No. In China. <laughs> no. That's in, good guess. Good guess. India. Look at Bob. India. Yeah. They're the big tea drinkers. I, you're wrong. It's the most obvious of them all. Great Britain. England. Yeah, the US. England. England. Yeah. But that was too obvious. <laughs> wow. England. Wow. Uh, Bob, way. you go going to India. You're going all over the place, but not to where it needs to be. Uh, that was too easy. I know. I know. <laughs> also, on this date in history, in 1928, the ongoing taxi cab war uh, – is increasing in intensity as two yellow cab garages were bombed with dynamite this week. Both companies are staying tight-lipped about the feud and have not passed details on to the local police. In what state? Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. Well, probably. I think. I think maybe. Maybe the the, the mob was involved. Uh, in you this. think? Just the you know. Uh, maybe, no, no, no. Maybe. Well, when it, that when doesn't it comes happen. Cabs and and uh, what did you need in New York, Bob? What did I to need? operate? What did you need? Medallion. It, you needed medallion. 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 Yeah, you had yeah. to pay a big price for that. It was a. Yeah, show, the, yeah. You remember the Bowery Boys episode about the taxi cab That's when right. they had the fights with the Bowery yep. Boys? That's that was right. a great episode. Yep, yeah. Yep. 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 All right. Here's one more for you before we go to the audience. On this date in history, <laughs> over 300 people die after a migrant boat coming from Africa sinks off the coast. The boat was carrying migrants coming mainly from Somalia. The boat was carrying over 500 people, and only 155 were rescued. What country what were they this? sailing to in 2013, Bob? Uh, hmm. What country were they sailing to to, to to find refuge? Spain. Good guess. The other guys, look at them. They're so confused. Look at Kyle's confused. Ronnie. Uh, Italy. Italy. I would say Italy. Italy, there we go. There we go. There we Nicely go. done. Nicely done. And now for the audience, of course. Now the question that they're dying to ask answer correctly. Let's see if they can get this one right. What do you think, uh Eric? Do you think uh one of them might guess this? Yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah, well, I mean Bruce, Bruce Stark's got you know all his uh social media stuff right next to him. So I know, he's got, I know, uh, I know. Got yeah, everybody's yeah. ready. Yeah. And he's got <laughs> Joey G's Alexa, gonna Alexa, cheat. Siri. Siri, he's got everybody working. <laughs> Every, all of their all of their internet prowess. So which of the following which is the name for a pipe used, among other things, to honor the arrival on a naval vessel of an import? Important visitor. What what is the the name of the ah. mm. mark the yeah. arrival? Yeah. Ah. Everybody's looking. At... Joey G. Boston <laughs> <laughs> whistle. Steve says. Uh, post on whistle. Uh, that's a bad. I'd I'd like to give it to Steve, but Boson is way off. It was the Boatswain's uh pipe. The boats the Boatswain's Boatswain. pipe. Boatswain. 
Uh, so you're saying this guy, Chris Eden, has won? Christopher Eden looks like he made Oh, may have oh my God. Christopher Eden. Oh, look at that. Oh, because he's nice. felt it right. We're, gonna, we're making him a pipe smoker, folks. Nice. Wow. Congratulations. Cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Steve, I, you missed it by a couple I, of letters. Uh, lost, uh, by, <laughs> by a couple of uh, letters. <laughs> that was Mike, good, though. Look at, look at, look at, Mike is great. Mike goes, yeah, spelling counts. Yes. yes it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike, you know, uh, what can I say? Steve? Especially when somebody next really did have it. You know, if it was like <laughs> six or seven people and not you were really close, we would have given it to the first guy. But, you he know, Steve's a teacher, too. So you just, just you know, yeah, he, he yeah. got excited. He had the answer probably, yeah. and he got excited. Got excited. You know, yeah. fat fingers, and he probably just hit a few things. Sorry, exactly. Steve. Yeah. But it was well, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce didn't even Bruce come in on this. He missed the boat. Wow. Did you yeah. get it? He, he missed, missed the boat. boat. He missed the <laughs> boat. He missed the boat. <laughs> he missed the boat. <laughs> oh, he said, yeah, miss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, All what right, can I guys. tell you? That's good. Uh, Eric, again, thank you so thank much you. for taking your time thank you for out. Thank you inviting uh, me. Oh, yeah. thank you, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for man. your wealth of knowledge. I mean, I've yeah. learned a lot on this show. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your tobacco. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful thank tobaccos, you. folks. Thank Go you. Out yeah. there. Try them all. And uh, yeah. yeah. And um, we'll see you in Chicago in uh, April. Yes. 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 So, yes. Folks, everybody who is listening, the Chicago Pipe Show is on. Starts April 9th to Sunday the 14th. It will be held at the uh, Hyatt Regency in Rosemont, minutes away from O'Hare Airport. So uh, you can start booking your hotel now. And every room in the main building has a balcony. I wonder what you can do in the balcony. Just yeah. saying. And there will be a <laughs> there will be a four thousand square foot tent available to hang out with uh, starting Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and uh, a new surprise. I guess I should say it. I'm bringing in a cigar mobile lounge to be set right next to the uh, right next to the tent too Very for cool. uh, for That's the cigar nice. guys who maybe might just find some cigar people inside too we're building up for the community of smokers so nice. make sure you book your room now go to it and you vendors get online and you will be able to book your uh, your tables so take as many tables as you want it's going to be a big show we're going to be in over uh 32 uh, almost 3200 uh 32,000 square feet of uh of showroom okay awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. It's going to well, be big, Eric. It's going to be big. It's almost yeah. like Fez and Run, but better. I know. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Really thanks nice. for the evening. Thank uh, you. Thank, you. thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We'll see Appreciate you. Appreciate it. See you Have later. a great night, everybody. Yeah. Good Take night, care. We'll see you next week. And remember, Ron, our new closing is take the gun and Take the cigar. The cigar. Exactly. <laughs> take the gun and, leave, and the take cigar the gun, and pipe. Take the, and take leave, the gun and take and leave, the cigar and pipe. And leave the person dangling on in cement shoes. <laughs> that's, that's how we end. <laughs> really? That's it? We, we got to work on that one, one a little leave bit, guys. Leave them hanging. <laughs> leave them hanging. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I like that one. Leave them hanging. Leave them hanging. Thank you, go, folks. <laughs> have a good week. We will see you next week <laughs> when we have much. Joey G. It's going to be a pairing episode. Rockefeller Cigars. We're going to have yes. another wild night with the, the chicken, man. The chicken's going to be here. So what else could it be? It will be <laughs> wild and crazy for sure. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, Take care. Good night. Ciao. Tell my brothers to line them up. We'll drink that whiskey from those old dirty cups. We'll toast to the present, the future, and the past. It ain't my first drink, but I sure it ain't my last. Cause this world is so beautiful. I see its love come shine through. This world is so beautiful. I feel
till its love comes shining through. This world is so beautiful. 